Now let's start by talking about your work safety yellow woman, which is a hand knitting sweater that you began knitting uh, during Melbourne's extended lockdown in 2020. Now it's being presented almost a year later in Sydney for acute actions. So this is a hand knitted sweater that resembles hazard warning tape with these hyperbolically long sleeves that extend to 1.5 meters, which is a social distance length required between people to allow for safety precautions during COVID. You've also chosen to use the color yellow for the yarn, which is a color commonly associated with anti-Asian pejoratives, you know, yellow peril, yellow fever, those are the words that come to mind. Do you want to talk about uh, why you made this work and what your headspace was like during that time? I think I started knitting it at the end, near the end of last year. So at this point, we were maybe three months into what would be a six month hard lockdown in Melbourne where I live. So I kind of had the idea ruminating in my mind for a little bit. And it's not the first time that I've knitted something that kind of speaks to that intersection of race and identity and using knitting to kind of play with that. I'm also like a hobby knitter, so I guess I'm interested in sort of straddling those spaces as well. Mm -hmm. But I guess in terms of the motivation for the sweater, it in itself is sort of a visual pun. Like, as you mentioned, it's yellow, and that's a very deliberate choice. And I wanted to find, like, bright yellow yarn as well because I wanted to replicate the visual appearance of safety hazard tech, which, of course, you know, so that itself is a visual metaphor, you know, keeping mm -hmm. your distance, you know, hazardous and so forth. And then, of course, yellow as a kind of term used to describe people of East Asian descent and their appearance. And, you know, that, that term of being a yellow woman, it's sort of like quite a complex, uh, it's kind of like a word that is, has a lot of baggage, but also has a lot of potential, I think, for further kind of, um, yeah, unpacking and so forth. So for example, what brings up um, ideas about yellow apparel and those sort of negative stereotypes. But then there's also kind of more positive spins on it in the film Crazy Rich Asians. Um, how there's a cover of the song Yellow by Coldplay, and obviously that was a very deliberate mm -hmm. choice um, about, you know, for the film and so forth. I guess I'm also interested in that particular kind of identity of the East Asian woman as, um, in this kind of, uh, there's, there's some scholars who are like doing really interesting work in that space. So the idea of yellow and the idea of safety kind of came together in this visual metaphor sweater. And also for me, I kind of like the idea of making something that is unwearable and spending hundreds of hours making something that I can't really, that doesn't have that function. Um, some of my knitter friends were like, but why would you make this? Because <laughs> I just, <laughs> I feel compelled to. This idea that if you're a person of color, you're automatically born into a political body. You know, your your body is harboring intergenerational trauma. Your body receives racism from society in all kinds of forms. Your body is made to feel, you know, safe by being in the orbit of white communities. Your body um, goes through generations of being told to shrink, to feel small, to adapt, um, to be gaslit, to assimilate under this umbrella of the model minority myth. I wanted to know how do you quarrel with these complicated issues and how does that feed into your work as a writer and as a curator? During the very beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, there wasn't a lot of kind of um, mandatory mask wearing happening or, you know, governments were very mm. slow to take action. Um, what would happen, at least in the neighborhood where I live, which is very close to the CBD, is that the only people wearing masks would be um, Asian people. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I actually felt unsafe. I was like tossing up whether I wanted to wear a mask, it feels safe that way, but then potentially be unsafe because then I would be exposed to racism, which basically happened because people would then see me and avoid me. I literally had people like obviously see me come up with a mask and just take the long way to avoid me. This is like very early yeah. on when these things weren't mandatory. So there was also that idea of distancing in that sense of that isolation, that um, grappling with, you know, like what safety am I choosing? Am I choosing the safety of invisibility mm -hmm. by not wearing a mask? Or am I choosing the safety of like, you know, like safety against the pandemic by wearing a mask? And this was, I think, an experience that many Asians uh, still continue to feel about their kind of um, public body, you know, as the mm -hmm. pandemic breaks. 